Well, hello and welcome to our weekly Aaron and Zach's awesome rafting show. We're uh, pretty stoked to be here. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And just as a reminder, this is something we do every, every week at 2 p.m. It used to be at 12.30, but now we're doing it at 2 p.m. And where we talk about rafting, whatever we feel like talking about. And we have a couple of videos we're excited to watch. Aaron's kind of looking at trying to find them right now. And uh, we're going to talk about safety talks a little bit. We promised that last week. We have some video review to talk about boat spacing and boat order I'm super excited about. And then some people, some videos people submitted. So we have a lot to do today. I'm super excited. Please smash the like button. Subscribe if you want to. You don't have to, but it makes us feel important if you do. And um, please comment. We love having people comment. So if you have thoughts, if you think we're idiots, tell us. We'd love to hear it. Kind of. Do we love to hear being called idiots, Aaron? I mean... Challenge us. Tell us why yeah. we're wrong. I think I think we we thrive under those conditions. We like to be challenged. Sure. So you know, and, and actually, I, I do think you know we've had this discussion off the air many times, Zach. The dialogue we have a lot of it. We, I think there's a lot. There's a lot that comes out of the dialogue in the discussions. Yeah. And usually, like the nuances, we get down to these like nitty gritty little like, well, do you do it this way or this way? That little bit doesn't really matter in the bigger scheme. But when you take the step back and all the stuff that's coming into that decision. I think that's the important more of the important fundamentals that we're looking at in a lot of ways from these discussions. So we we yeah, love your feedback, love your comments, love your questions, and love your 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 opinions. So yeah, and I think that if we if just you and I, this isn't just us pontificating, I hope. I mean, we can pontificate and people can believe everything we say, but we're wrong sometimes and we're learning too. So that you know, please like if we if we just did this to talk about ourselves and how smart we are, it would be a, a super lame show. So we're here really to uh, to also learn, have discussions. I'm learning from you, and hopefully from the people who comment. Um, you know, we might it might might take us down a path of something to read after the, after the show, or you know, makes us think a lot too. So please, there's a lot of smart smart people out there who are our, our listeners who who can help us. I think. I I agree, Zach. I think that you, a lot of times they're really helpful in terms of letting you know that how you're wrong and that yeah, I'm right. Yeah. That's that's what I really appreciate Come about on. it. Is I feel like Come more on. often than not, I mean, I'm wrong, you know, I'm wrong my fair share too, but I feel like most of the time they've got my back. So I, I do appreciate that. Yeah, it's weird how people like you're, you, I think people support you more than me, which I don't, doesn't make sense to me. Um, <laughs> but. Well, let's get started. Uh, you know, we talked last week about talking about safety demonstrations or safety talks. And I got to tell you, I am not in the mind space to do my safety talk like I like you wanted me to do. But I thought I what I would do is is do a little slideshow on what I think is a good safety talk or safety demonstration would look like. Right. Well, let me let me rephrase that. This is this is the safety demonstration that I think is the IRF standard. So this is an international general safety talk in a flow that I think is what I would consider an IRF standard. It's not the safety talk I give, right? If, I, if I'm doing a multi-day commercial trip, mine is a little different. <laughs> Do we but really have to use safety demonstration? I mean, it's that's so vague, like safety demonstration. Well, first what, what of all- What does that even mean? He, I, this is what it means. It means you're showing people not talking. I think a safety talk means somebody stands up there with their arms crossed and they're just like, I'm going to tell you how to be safe. A safety demonstration urges the trip leader to, to act things out more than they're talking. And I think it's important from an international perspective because a lot of times you're giving this, this talk or demonstration to people where English is not their first language. There, some, people, some people might be translated to right, or may no, not even speak the language. So if you're giving a safety talk and there's some people don't speak the same language, some it's their second language, you know, then I think it's important to be able to act out a lot of the things. So I think from an international standard, I like safety demonstrations and it to the, to the guests listening, they never hear this terminology. This is just like internal terminology. This is just amongst guides. I mean, I guess you're like, Hey, come over for my safety talk. And they hear that. But you could you could say, hey, come over. I'm going to talk about safety. I think demonstration make makes the point that it's it's about your actions as much as your words. We're demonstrating safety. That's what it seems like it says to me, which is just kind of odd. Uh, I get what you're saying, but I, I think yeah, I think the point I want to make here is that it's not just a person standing up talking. That that a safety talk involves a lot of 
acting mm-hmm. things out and using motions. I think that's totally, what it, yeah, it total, is. totally agree. I almost think maybe safety talk and demonstration would be a better, better phrase for it. Yeah. You know, and Dustin had some other thing that was like, I don't know. It's like eight words. It was like the, I don't know, the safety, the liability and safety release talk and form for, you know, you want to try to keep it <laughs> short too. Right. I mean, Hey, totally. hey well, no, no, I, I'm not. If saying my thing said safety, safety talk and demonstration too. I'm not saying to call it the safety talk and demonstration, but yeah, I I under I appreciate what's going on with it. Calling the safety demonstration, I think in some ways that's helpful. I think in other ways, Zach, like you're going against your your common thing is like, hey, I there's know. a common vernacular. I know, and you're going away from it. And is it, that's why I think safety talk and demonstration is better. Everyone still knows what safety talk is. Oh yeah, we do a safety talk and demonstration. Oh okay, that's why I kind of suggested that as a thought, just because you're somebody else. Oh hey, time for the safety demonstration. We're demonstrating yeah, no. safety. But I think again, this is we're going to talk about safety talks or safety dip from from an international IRF level, and I think that. Mark and the IRF, people in the IRF are trying to make it called safety demonstration internationally. In the US, we'll never change it. It's always going to be safety talk, right? But from a from an IRF standpoint, I think I'm trying to use the word safety demonstration. I still, it slips all the time. I call them safety talks and I still will. You know, but, and when I tell, you know, if I talk to the guests, like, hey, come on over, we're going to have a safety talk. Okay. I'm gonna, I will say those words with guests knowing I'm going to do my best to do it as a demonstration. Here's a quick, I mean, we are, we are going down a little rabbit hole, but we might as well. <laughs> We've got no comments. No one's listening since we switched yeah. on. So no one's here for this. Yeah. Um, you can skip ahead when you're watching this later and just go to where we get to the good stuff. But um, if you were to describe to someone what this is, who's never been part of one and knows what one is, what would you say it is? How would you describe you it? To, a, to a guide or to a guest? Just to, to a person. Like, like someone just came onto our show right now, yeah. never been on a rafting trip before. And they're like, well, what is a safety demonstration or what is a safety talk? How would you do, what would you, how would you, how would you phrase it? Or like, would I choose safety demonstration? You're in the court of law and you're like being deposed and you're supposed to explain to the jury what a safety talk or safety demonstration. Someone who has no idea what it is. How would you describe it? It's something that shares information that individual passengers need to know to aid in the safety of the trip. Okay. Thanks, David. Um, okay. Spell holes wrong. Um, okay, well, let me let me share my presentation. You can pick it apart. I mean, we're on slide yeah, one, see. and that's just like you you're you're getting on one word. So, so again, I just want to be very clear with everybody. This is what I feel like is the ire of standard, which is again not my normal safety talk. There are different things, but I understand mm-hmm. the value of an ire of standard safety talk. So when we you, we dig into the weeds. You might be like, what about this and this? And I'll be like, yeah, I get that. But for the, the IRF, I think there's something different. Let me go ahead and switch slides here. There we go. So it starts, and, and, the, and I like let there be a flow. So it starts with a flow. I think introducing the guides, it's not something I always do, but something good to do. Um, Wait, we're not about- seeing a recording of you giving one? No. So we can break that Aaron, part? Aaron, I thought Aaron, you were going to record. I thought, I I thought you were just backing out on doing it live. I thought no, we were going to have you do it live, and now you're like, oh, I don't want to do it live, so we're going to do it. I hear you. No, nope. this is a PowerPoint presentation about what's in it. And oh, when I have time, so I'll make this for you. This a is not PowerPoint painful. presentation. Is, hey, Aaron, chill out. Dude, first of all, you know what I forgot to do? I want to apologize. I want you to apologize to the <laughs> listeners for your behavior last week. Apologize. I feel, like, I feel like you should apologize to our listener base for your, your like fired up behavior last week. I guess I was a little fired up last week, but uh, yeah. I think I think specifically you were, when you were talking about like the falling out of your boat so it doesn't flip. I think you were on crazy train that last week. Um, I think there's a point where that does happen. I mean, the physics works. I it, it's possible that some boats don't flip because somebody falls out, but people should stay in their boats. Yeah, totally. Don't, don't jump out because you're like, oh, I'm going to save the ship. I'm going to jump no, out. No, no. I mean, I've, I've jumped out my boat before. And you heard a lot of people do this. They've jumped out the boat because they thought it was going to flip. And it doesn't. It stays upright. And so you, I agree. No, Your no, 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 no. The they fall out of the boat. And when they're done, they're like, oh, I jumped out on purpose to save everybody. That's what yeah. happened. 
Well, and I was kind of doing a little bit of that for fun too, I will say. But I think there is a point where sometimes people fall out of the boat does keep a boat upright. But in general, I agree with you. The idea of that if that boat is upright, you're in it. And that's part of my safety demonstration. I don't demonstrate it, but I talk about this part of where, okay. you know, there, hey, stay in, if the boat's upright, stay in it. Have that mindset if the boat's upright, you're in it. I agree yeah. with you. Don't, don't in fall in out, general, like, that's the Don't fall out to save to the ship. Yeah, don't be like, I'm going to fall out to save everybody else. Like that's. But, but if you're a guide and you fall out and you want to like, you know, act cool Safe afterwards, face. You, you can be yeah. like, dude, I, I threw myself out to save everyone else. Yeah, that's yeah, I know. It's, it sounds like an excuse afterwards. Okay, I'm going to yeah, go through this true. fast because I know this might be boring, but I think it's important. And people can chime in with this stuff they think missed. So I like to say welcome to this river. It's class, whatever. And a good chance to ask if anybody has medical conditions or they're non-swimmers. All right. And then you ask that in front of everyone? I don't. I say but that's if you have any, IRF. Uh, I th what I say, it's I it's it's so the IRF doesn't have an official safety talk. Uh, this is more of what I perceive as what checks off all the boxes in their safety talk. This is and this is where I put that in the order. And what I would say is is if you have a medical condition, please pull me and I don't know about or you didn't tell the office. Please pull me aside later and let me know if it's something appropriate. Okay. I don't say, hey, if you have herpes, if you have herpes, yeah. raise your hand. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Do okay. I, I agree then. Just as long as that, I think that's a key part of it, though, because I've seen guys say, hey, is anyone here a non -swimmer? Please let us know if you're a non -swimmer. You're like, dude, yeah. who's going to admit that in front of the group? Come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Michael, that's interesting. I think in this case, the idea of the, um, of the safety, like, this is an important part if we talked into like the, other parts of doing it. This is just the, the what it's made of, but how to do it. This this demonstration needs to happen in the beginning and needs to continue throughout the trip. So the demonstration is replaces the talk just in terminology, but it's an important thing to keep the the, the, the what's the information happening through the trip. Yeah, good one. And yeah, Denise. Yeah, yeah totally. I, good. Yeah, it's, Denise, we're all on the same page. And, and Zach's pretty much when he. My my yeah, joke you know, always yeah. is like, hey, you know, if, you know, it depends on the. You have to read the group, but I'm like, hey, if anybody has a medic, any medical conditions, I don't need to know who has herpes right now. Just pull me aside. And herpes, I'll be like, herpes isn't something I even want to know about. But if it's something appropriate that you didn't tell the office for some reason, please tell me. But do it privately after we're done. And I don't think anybody's ever told me, ever. So either maybe. they don't trust me or it's maybe not that of them. Well, after your herpes joke probably really puts people in an uncomfortable <laughs> position. Well, it depends on the it depends on the reading the crew. Like if it's a bunch of kids, I'm not gonna say that. But if it's a bachelor <laughs> party, I'm gonna say that, right? That's not your standard rogue river uh, safety no. talk. Okay. No. All right. So then from that introduction, move on to what I'm gonna call the equipment phase, where we talk about PPE that everybody has to wear a helmet, life jacket, shoes, and wetsuit if appropriate. The paddle, talking about the T grouping, the most dangerous part. There's a shaft you hold on to, and if you let go of anything, it's the shaft. If you pick your nose, let go of the shaft, pick your nose, hold on to the T-grip, and the blade is what you push on. And in terms of the parts of the raft, talking about the outside tube, the thwart, that you need to sit on the outside tube, not the thwart. I tell people the thwart explodes if you sit on it, but it's kind of – it's not. It's a joke. It's not serious. But I want to urge them to sit on the outside of the boat. And that there's a perimeter line outside the boat, which is something they can hold on to in case they're, you know, unstable or something. There's just there for their 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 safety, I guess. Wait, wait, Zach, the, the yeah. raft you have behind there doesn't have a perimeter line on it. Do you really talk about perimeter lines? Do you run perimeter lines? I don't run them, but when I'm teaching to an IRF standard, I IRF run them. And I, I think them. that's yep. and that's why I asked. Is like that's why I thought it was an IRF standard, but I think and I think that's a good thing for people to understand. And yeah. I, and I, even though you said at the beginning, I think we need to revisit that through. Is like, yeah, what do you? Because I think people want to know what do you do all the time, Zach. You know, what do you do for both the IRF and your personal one? And what are things you only do for the IRF, and what are things that only you do for your personal one? Because the overlap seems like that's the key. Is where are you doing? What are you doing? For both? Yeah, I, I mean, to, so that this ends, I'm just going to go through the IRF one, and we can talk yeah. about this stuff later. Uh, and also, so in parts of the raft, so perimeter line towards the main tube. And this is where um, I'll talk about how to sit sit to stay in the raft, where I'll say, you know, tuck your feet under the thwarts, but not like crazy, just like gently for stability. Sit on the outside tube, put your weight on your feet instead of your butt, and then using your pad by paddling, you have another point of contact. And so this is where I'll focus on how to stay in the boat as well. 
Stay, and I think staying in the boat's important. Do you have anything to add about staying in the boat, Aaron? Because I know you, this is a big one for you. No, I think that's the, that's the name of the game, right? Nothing, I mean, my safety talk usually starts off with, hey, you know, what we found over the years is people who stay in the boat typically have a really good time. You know, and, and the people who fall out usually still have a good time, but the odds shift a little bit. So have the mindset that if that boat's upright, you're in it. And I think I start my safety talk with that and I end it with it. Just like, hey, stay in the boat. You know, and like, yeah, we talked about all this stuff. But guess what? If you stay in the boat, 95% of what we discussed, you don't have to worry about it, you're in the raft. So stay in the yep. raft. Yep. You know, and I think I think that is like, and just teaching people how to stay in the raft is so important. And that's why I like calling overs and get downs and doing those things to keep people in the boat. You're just like, you're limited. You're just like so much less bad stuff happens when everyone stays in the boat. So yeah, I couldn't, couldn't agree more. Denise, there's a whole nother half yes. an hour. We can talk about the tangibles, not, you know, take your sunglasses mm -hmm. off. You look in the sun. Don't make them look in the sun, but the putting it back to the river. So they're not look distracted. There's so many things here that, we're just going through the with the contents and not going through all the other <clears> stuff here. We'd be here all day, and we have, you know, I think we'd bore everybody to death with my PowerPoint. But these are great points, Denise. Thank you. Like the reducing distractions is just critical. With, and my big thing with safety talks is saying the you can't just say the words. That's not enough. You have to like you vocalizing words does not mean the safety talk was done. The the guests learning from that and being able to apply that is the key. So you have to present it in a way where they, they digest the information and are able to use it. And it's hard. Um, it takes, takes a lot. And that's a whole separate discussion we could have if you guys want another PowerPoint. So, uh, th so there's going to be close swimmer rescue, medium swimmer rescue, and long swimmer rescue. This is how Mark breaks it up. And I, I like it. It's good. So if you fall out quickly, Mark's big thing is smile. He says that you can't, it's proven that you can't smile and panic at the same time which is probably true, but I like it. Smile, don't freak out. Keep your paddle. In international standards, it's super important to keep your paddle because a lot of countries don't have unlimited paddles, right? So holding on to your paddle in a swim is, is talked about a lot in swims. We're in the US and people like, go, oh, I'm like, whatever. We'll get it eventually. Or if we lose a paddle, like it's not the end of the world. I'll get more. Um, get back to the boat. Usually you're close so you can get to the boat. Showing how to pull somebody in and, and demonstrating that. you Using this, somebody... You know, one of the guests grabbing their PFD, physically pulling them into a boat. And this is where we're talking about not standing uh, to avoid foot entrapments. Medium rescue, uh, medium swimmer rescue, just medium distance. Would really like choose to aggressively swim to the raft, and you can use your paddle as an extension of your arm, or the people in the boat could use a paddle for the extension of their arm. And the long swimmer rescue is, again, like, Smile, hold your paddle. This is where we talk about the defensive swimming position. Like you're not going to get rescued, really. You're going to just swim through a rapid. Get your feet up, butt down. Uh, my big joke is that there's never been a butt entrapment, and you know that always gets like a laugh and a half. Um, and then when you're comfortable, look around to, and swim to a boat or a shore. That's that's long swimmer rescue, and included in long swimmer rescue and or separate is talking about throw bags. And so uh, talking about how they, they add, do add additional risk, um, how, to, you know, how to get it and then put it over your shoulder, that whole thing, not to wrap it around a body part. A great way to get a, a laugh is to pretend to wrap it around your neck. I mean, that never stops being funny. And also explain that you, that you may need to let go. You know, like grab it in a way that you can let go. So that's throw bags. Next is flips. And uh, again, holding on to your paddle is super important in, around the world because they can't get them. Um, if you're if you come up and you're under the raft to get out from underneath it, and as the boat flips, uh, either swim to another raft aggressively nearby, or stay close and listen to the guide for directions. That the guide will get on top and share directions and follow those so that so that the raft can get flipped back over. And this is where actually I think it's important to an IRF standard. You have a raft there. Like most of us in the U.S., when we give a safety talk, we just talk about this stuff. But you have a raft there. You do flip it over. You sure it looks like that the guy jumps on. This is a time that that to jump on that raft that you have next to you. And that's most of the content. I'm gonna go over a few more things, then we can, Aaron, you can pick this apart or anybody can. Um, this is where I might go to some river specific things. You know, like 
beyond what's in the normal talk, dependent on the river. Like if it's super continuous or there's like bears that might attack you or pterodactyls that eat you or shallow water where you really need to emphasize keeping your feet up or specific things to that river. Uh, I would cover those. And I'll do a summary uh, where I just ask, the, I'll ask people, what do you guys think are the three most important things in this talk? And they'll verbalize things back to me. We think it's this, we think it's that. And I make it really clear for me, the three most important things is they wear their PPP the whole time. They keep their feet up if they swim and that they have, they do their own self rescue. So this is a chance for me to summarize and interact with everybody to make sure that they're listening. And then after the summary, if you have safety kayaks or safety cataracts, this is where there's a demo of those. And in the US, we don't use them very often, uh, but it's something that is pretty commonly used internationally. And here's where either the safety kayaker goes through this stuff or the head guide potentially talks about this stuff. So that's my that's 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 what's in it. Anybody had Aaron, do you have any comments or does anybody have anything that you think of oh, man, I can't believe we didn't cover that? You're on mute, Aaron. Thank you. One of the things I like about the RF one is it's trying to be really concise and just having mm -hmm. the bare bones, most important stuff. And as you talked about, it's like the safety demonstration, the purpose is so if something happens to someone on the river, they will respond in an appropriate way. And I think minimizing how much you say is important to that. If you only had to say one thing, like let's say all that matters is keep your feet up. And you just said, hey, this is our safety talk. You fall out, you keep your feet up. Odds are people are going to do a really good job of keeping their feet up. As soon as we start adding more stuff, their ability to keep their feet up is going to decrease. The more, uh, more I agree a hundred percent. I and agree. So I, I, 100%. Yeah. So that's what I really like about this talk. And then I'm going to go, this is, so I'm going to come and I'm going to say, I think the whole part about the paddle and how to sit in the raft and the parts of the raft, well, I think it's important to say, Hey, have a mindset of how to, how to, st to stay in the raft. Like if you're going to teach them to paddle at another time, why not talk about how to sit in the boat when you teach them how to paddle? Cause that all seems to go together really well. And it seems weird to me to like talk about how to sit in the boat, sit on that outside tube and just, you're going to talk about that later. And that's not, I don't think that's really necessary. That's, that'd be my argument is like, how are you saying the that raft. the individual guides should talk about how to sit in the raft? Like, so, well, the, so the part of this talk is there is a separate, there is a separate guide paddle talk. This is like, the big talk, and then the guy's like, here's forward, here's back, here's left turn, here's right turn, blah, blah, blah. Right? So that's a – here's high side or whatever you're going to do. That was separate. I would, put it, part. I would put it this way. I think in the ideal world, Zach, we're working a trip together with five guides. Mm -hmm. You do the safety talk. I do the paddle talk for the whole – everyone. And we are all teaching paddling the same. So it doesn't matter who does the safety talk to paddle talk because we're all doing paddling the same. And so you talk about one thing and then I'm like, okay, you guys come on over here. And then everyone walks over has a little break after the safety talk. And mm. then we talk about how to sit the boat and how to paddle. I, I think that the, I think the handoff to another person just kind of is distracting. Oh, you know, I like, think it's, oh. I think it's, I think it's important because then Zach, you talking for 10 minutes versus you talking for 17 minutes, 18 minutes. Like it's much better. Like, okay, we just talked about what to do if something happens. Done. That's all the safety yeah, stuff. I, I'm going to make the and claim that come. what's more, I hear what you're saying. You say like, I talk about something, you talk about something. I'm going to make the claim that I'd rather there be a break in time, like walk down to the boats and then each guide then verbalizes the exact same thing to their, their five. Hey, that, that way it's a different format, a different place. And so and time is well, that, that, that's No, no, no. That's I'm, I, I meant that I wasn't clear. It's like, that's what I was saying too. Is like, Hey, let's walk down to the boats now. Everyone yeah. come over. Like you're done. You say, Hey, everyone head on over to where Aaron is. So no, they're not in the same location. I agree. I don't like the handoff where you keep sitting in the exact same spot and you switch people. No, I'm saying you get people up, yeah. move them around just like you would in your classroom, right? Your kids are falling asleep. Like, okay, let's get up and go walk around, do something, move around. Get the blood moving um, a little go, bit. Go, yeah, go sit Pro someone else's process that yeah. Process that information, maybe ask a question, yeah. and then go to the boats. And then if there's six guides on a the trip, then six guides give their individual now, talk I to think their one. six guests. I think you do one. I think you do one. And I think you do one because it's just like, particularly on day trips, day after day after day after day, I think that wears out the guides and they do they get lazier about it. 
because they're just like, let's get yeah, on the bar. And just you go. can't always, you can't gather them around. Like think about the Tuolumne. There's not like the, the, the rafts are sometimes spread out there. Yeah, you like, just bring them around one raft. You just bring them out. Everyone walk down to one raft, sit in front of one raft and you do the talk. We, that's what we do. That's what Sierra Max done for years. That's what, that's how they do it. They have one person do the paddle talk. I think I personally like each guide to develop that rapport then. And hopefully the guides can do their, their paddle talk pretty effectively and easy. And that way the guests learn, like get used to that voice of that guide right away. There's like a connection there. I do agree with you in the point that I think a lot of places there's like one really good trip leader and a lot of like pretty mediocre guides, or maybe there's two really good guides and like four yeah. that are like, eh, okay. I think in that case for sure. But if all the guides are solid and professional, I'd rather have them go out to the guides and get get their own individual talks that are the same talks. No, but here's the problem, Zach. This is Zach. This is what's better about doing it as a group. Is guess what? You do the safety talk, and I'm kind of hanging on the back listening to your safety talk. Then I do the paddle talk. A bunch of the guides come over and just kind of overhear my paddle talk. And then maybe next time you do the paddle talk, and I listen to you do the paddle talk. But if we all split off and do our own paddle talks, I'm not really learning what other people are doing. I'm just doing what I'm doing. And how did I learn how to do a good safety, a good paddle talk? Have I listened to anyone else? Have I seen other people's tricks? Do I know? And I think that's another advantage of having it all together is that it gives the guides the time to listen to each other, listen to them do it, and take care of those last minute things that need to get taken care of without rushing around and feeling panicked. Because there's always someone taking care of stuff at the end. And they're like the last one getting their chain the boat. And then everyone's like, hey, let's go, let's go. And you're like, dude. Yeah. Okay, let's agree to disagree. I, I still disagree with you. But I think it's situation dependent too. But a couple of comments. I think Peter agrees with you because everybody's done at the same time. Not like I can do my paddle talk in like a minute yeah. and a half. Some people take 12. So I've, I have 11 minutes or 10 and a half minutes to be like, all right, guys. So what do you think about the latest Avengers movie? You know, and so I think there's an advantage to that, but I think it can be overcome. Uh, I think going Willie back to Bum Willie Bum Bum is kind of more on your side. And I agree. I, and I agree. Yeah. I think you do both, though. I think you can do the basic talk about the commands. I mean, we did this on Cherry Creek for years and it worked really well. We do it up on the flats. We talk about the power. Yeah, Cherry Creek's different, though, because you only have like eight guests or 10 guests or whatever. And no, I mean, they, they want to learn, whatever, 20. They have 20 people. They want to yeah. learn. They're just like, oh, gee, I got to be serious. And so I think when you have your normal, like, normal raft passenger, they maybe are not so intent on listening. You need to kind of get their attention. And I, 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 I'm going to say what Willie does. I mean, Cherry Creek's a unique beast. Like you guys do your thing the way you do your thing, right? I, I like what Willie's saying because you sit them in the boat, you give them a paddle, and I practice dry land stuff. I practice timing. Like I, I there's stuff I do to prep my crew, and I don't need somebody else to tell me how to do. Or my guess how to do a four paddle. I can tell them that pretty easily. But you're, Zach, right? you're really experienced, and you've done it for 20 years. When you have, when you have a your first year, how does your new guy, when you hire them and they're doing the, they're on the one HRP, how do they do a good one? Just because, I mean, they you're saying, you say, you're saying do one big group so you can train people better. You can train guys better. I think the quality, the quality of the discussion and the quality of the training is better to start there. And then you split you're up. You're probably right. And then I think it also, and I think it also just saves your guides. It saves wear and tear on your guides. If you're doing it every day, it's just nice to have that little extra time. You know, a little less talking because you're talking all day with people on the boat, day after day after day. And just in the morning, be like, okay. And it's also nice as the trip leader. Hey, trip leader, you just did the safety talk. Now someone else goes and talks to everyone in public. You have a minute to get your stuff together, make sure you're set to get on the water. Versus, oh, now you got to go right into your boat. This, sound, this sounds more like going. you care about what the, the guides than you care about what the guests experience. No, I think I'm trying to set the trip up for success. And I think you know, you've got, you've got to take care of your guides. If you want the if, happy guides, happy trip. I uh, mean, yeah, yeah. I think that we have different styles here. You're just like, yeah, yeah, as long yeah. as the guides are happy, all the guests are happy. Well, I mean, not all, not only, but you, you got to take care of your people. Of course. But, but like taking care of them is like taking care of them, not like giving them two minutes off to rest their brain from talking to people. Now, Willie, it's a good point. They're all capable of doing the safety demo. Yeah, it's a good point. I still like, I like, I like that. I, I really prefer as a guy working in that environment where we take turns doing the safety demo, particularly because I've led so many trips and I like having that like five, 10 minutes to get myself together. 
before and, and they've just been talked about the basics so we can go out there and we can try forward. Well, and we'll I mean, what I'm hearing is your, what I'm hearing about Aaron is your needs. Like, well, oh, no, I, I think the needs, I, wanna, I think the needs of a trip leader. Yes. Take care of your trip yeah, you're, leaders. You're like, let me take care of myself. So somebody else does this talk for me. That's what I'm no, hearing. I, I'm hearing what's I'm, more effective. Uh, well, no, it is more effective. That's my whole point is like, you have to, because you're happy because you got to have time to have a sandwich and drink your latte. So you no, like you have time to put the, you so have happy time to air and happy little, trip. You have happy air and happy trip. A little, little slip in the box, you know, like, oh, hey, we're I, launching. Hey, I, I just got up 20 minutes earlier and did that. I, 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 yeah, I, right. I, okay. Anyway, so let's, let's move on. I think we have a difference of opinion. We're just wasting people's time with this discussion. Uh, the, the NZRA, the New Zealand Raft Association, which is super pro, requires that everybody can do it. I think it's good that everybody can do it. I think it's some people are way better than others, you know, no matter what. And it comes with practice. So it's, it is good to spread it around too. Um, I mean, why not just, business. Zach, but my last thing is, why don't you just do the whole safety talk and everything separate in the raft? You could. I mean, based upon your argument, that would be better. No, my argument, my, here's why I think it's better. Because I think there's things that have to get covered at a high level. That's what I just covered. Those things that get covered at a high level consistently by somebody really good at it. And I think that's one thing. Where the paddling, like, it, it's, it's, if they, how are you going to mess up teaching them how to paddle? Right? The, the, everything has to get covered start to finish. So if each individual guy does it, somebody's going to forget to say, keep your feet up. So having one polished talk for everybody for the key things is important. But I also think it's really good that, to learn to switch environments when you learn. So switch from the big yeah. stadium, okay. everybody listening, to the down sitting in the boat learning. I think that changing people's position and group size is better for efficacy. That's just my opinion on that. Well, I, I, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, toy raft. I don't bring a Bobby doll of mine. Um, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. So the, I'm a big fan of having people do things. And I, I, I do a lot of, of me physically showing things over talking, but yeah, I mean, you, you talk for 30 minutes, people won't learn things. And Aaron, your point about how, let's say the most important thing of a safety talk is keeping your feet up. Right. And every time you add something, people's remembering, keep your feet up goes away. I think it's a really yeah. good point. Like, Let's say there's three key things. Wear your PPE, keep your feet up, and how to stay in the boat. Those are, those are really important things. And if you add another 27 minutes to that, those things aren't – like people's memory of them, the importance of them goes away. So everything you add is taking away from the key stuff. So if you're going to talk about like rattlesnakes eating your lunch leftovers in your safety talk, it may take away from people's ability to keep their feet up or remembering the importance of keeping their feet up. All right. So when when do you talk about rattlesnakes and stuff like that? I do in my safety talk, actually, but I do it pretty quickly. I say there's some things on land that are dangerous, and uh, on this river there are rattlesnakes. Don't pet. I, I mean, I make a joke out of. I make some. I say, hey, eighty percent of all rattlesnakes are to drunk men on their hands, and people always think that's funny. Um, I mean, maybe they don't. Maybe they're just laughing to make it feel good. But I feel like adding some humor in, not over the top at some, it grabs their attention again. And so I feel like if I can, I can talk about some things, if I can add some humor and engage them, it gets them like back up mm. paying attention to me. I cover poison oak too a lot in the safety talk. Um, so, yeah, in the safety talk. No, I, I yeah, because it's a problem. I, and I agree. There's yeah. some things like that, that, like, you know, like no diving and, and you know, and like no some diving is a big stuff. one. I think I think of this stuff that you didn't that isn't covered in the IRF, no diving would be first on my list. Yeah. No, that's, my, I mean, that's on my talk. That that seems to me to be like that's up there with foot entrapment in my mind. No diving. Like yeah. in terms of like yeah. the the seriousness and like the potential, like I think more people like on the Tuolumne River there's I think there's more people who have had permanent spinal injuries than like foot entrapment deaths, you know, like yeah. Um it, I mean, I mean, what? Aaron, is it, is it maybe though? I mean, is no diving maybe river specific, right? Like if you're going to go mm -hmm. do a big, mm -hmm. well, no, mm -hmm. just Everywhere. if you're going to go, Everywhere. if you do a big Everywhere. water trip in India, is it really a problem? Yeah, because there's certain places that are still shallow. Like there's still yeah. places that you don't know how deep it is right there. You think it's deep, but you don't know. You don't know what's under the surface. There's could be a rock ledge that comes out underneath the water. Like 
you don't know how deep it is and it looks deeper than it is. I, that's why I think, I think that's a, just a constant. I mean, Grand Canyon, I mean, I come, no diving. I mean, my, my talk sometimes I, I change my, but I, I go through some, some quick things like how to stay safe, like no drinking or drugs, don't dive. And uh, there's one more I talk about. There's one more that like, there's just some quick things like, boom, like when I get those off, just so you know, I don't joke yeah. around about them. I'm like, just it boom, takes boom, 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 three yeah. seconds. I just yeah. crush through them and like, Hey, FYI, these are some key things. I'm saying these words. You hopefully you heard these, uh, but I don't dwell on them. And so it takes like 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Circling back to the part about the snakes in the poison oak. I, a lot of times like to break it up when you pull, if you're doing a multi-day trip, like I, I think yours is, is like when you get to get to lunch or pull in for, for lunch, the first day is just to take people off the side, talk to them about that stuff. Kind of more the camp scene stuff around there. You're like, Hey, basically getting down to lunch the first day. I'm not really yeah. worried about the rattlesnakes when we're on the boat. I'm not worried about the poison oak when we're on the boat, you know, depending. And then we get to that first stop and talk about a lot of those little schnadily things. I mean, I do a stuff. camp talk when we get to camp the first night on a multi-day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have a lot to cover there. And I and they they want to get to their – they're not – they don't want to be sitting in a chair with me listening to me talk, right? I If I have limited attention there because – so I have to talk about the groover. I've talked about food. i got to talk about a bunch of other stuff. And so sometimes I'm, I know they want to get in Cedric Tendum and they're maybe they're cold. So for me, it's trip dependent. If I know I can come, if I have them engaged in the morning talk, I'll throw it in there. If I can gather them at lunch, I'll cover it there. I think lunch is the best time because usually they're waiting for lunch to be made and they're not going to. Oh, for sure. Up. Yeah. I'd way rather, I'd rather do the, as much of the camp talk as possible at lunch than do it at camp. I try that too, but you don't always have their attention at lunch yeah. either because you got to gather everybody together yeah. and so you know i know my things i have to cover the first day and if i if i have an engaged group and i have i i can tell i have their attention i'll cover a little more of that stuff in that morning talk but if i could tell they're barely listening and they want to get on the river i'll try to cover at lunch and then if i am like ah, somebody's off for a hike or they ran off i didn't gather them then i'll cover it in camp and i will force them to sit there and listen to me talk because i have i definitely can force them to sit there but i know that I they they want to move on. I think Zach, that's one of the most important parts though of, of the safety talk is, is, is having the pulse of the group and, and noticing when they're, they're spacing out and you're losing them. Cause if you're, if you're painting, you can notice when the group, like, it's just like the energy changes, the people's body language changes. You can tell when they're not yeah. being engaged and you're like, okay, I gotta like, I gotta, first of all, like shake things up and I gotta shorten this thing in general. Cause they're, 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 they're done. But there could be distracted. Like there could be weirdos walking by, just being weird. Like, oh man, I've lost them. Or trucks driving by Boundary Creek for some reason. Like, you could have distractions, you know, or they're just like not in the right mindset. And yeah. so, I it, there's a lot of reading in the group for me. Let's just let's move on. You ready to move on from this? This yeah. was this was based on a kind of a commercial talk, but I really feel like private boaters should be doing some sort of safety talk when like their friends come and things. So the idea is to share some things that that everybody can use. Uh, there's there's two things that you didn't cover, two more things you didn't cover. Got it. Let's talk about it. All right. And maybe you, you kind of hit on it, but what do you think are the two most common cause of river trip injury? The interaction between the shore and the boat. Yeah, I think, and I don't know, I didn't see that in there. Maybe that was part of it. I feel, like that's, I feel like that's one thing is, yeah, the getting in and out of the boats, walking right in that the danger zone, you know, up, you know, like where you like right on your shore, basically where all those rafts are. I mean, that's um, a prac that's a practical knowing that's the answer thing, not like a IRF standard to talk about that. But that, but that's, that's what I mean. That should be an IRF standard. It's like, that's where people get hurt. That, I think that's, that's like, that's, yeah. I mean, that is like, where do people get hurt and how do people get hurt? I mean, I mean, my, a, my normal talk starts. So I go, Hey, what are you guys afraid of today? And they're like swimming. And blah, blah. I'm like, statistically, the most dangerous thing is getting in and out of the boat. Just yeah. so you guys know. So, and then when they get hurt later doing it, they're like, "Oh, you, you told me you were right." Yep. Yep. So I think that's one. And then I think the other one on 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 paddle boat trips is the paddle tee. Which I, which I blew through in this thing, but it's a big part of this talk. And, yeah. I, and it was I, yeah. yeah. But I think that's why I just wanted to be. I thought that one was yeah. part of it. And I think for everyone hearing, particularly we got a lot of private voters here, that paddle tee, man. I think that's like one of the key parts of your whatever paddle talk, your safety talk, both. That's something I like to repeat. You call it the paddle tee. I call it the T-grip. You call it the paddle tee. Everybody else calls it the T-grip. 
Every time we call it the paddle tea, I'm like, what? what? Oh, yeah, the, the tea grub. I have one right here. This thing. Paddle tea. I like to, I like to, in my safe talk, if I'm, if I'm in a mood to be funny, I'll say, you know, sometimes it gets jammed and twisted in people's mouth and, and it's a lot of dental work. That's my corny joke about that one. All yeah, right. They're, they're pretty dangerous. Well, Aaron, this is different video that we reviewed last night with my class four school. Uh, but I wanted to just share moving on from safety talks. Is this a guide uh, out front or is this one of your students out front? One of the students. Hey, looks good. Oh, they, oh, well, she's a guide too in Idaho. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, this is a really strong group. Willie Bum Bum, what's this, the so for? Don't get it. So I can't remember what I was going to talk Oh, we were talking about some boat spacing stuff. And so we're just going to watch this. And I think I just spent a lot of time talking about boat spacing and working on boat spacing. And I just want to get your take on what's good and bad. We're heading into a rocky rapid. How do you feel about this as boat spacing? It's pretty good. And I think it's tricky because the, the person, the, the craft are so different. Luckily, they're both light and you can change, you know, like, but the, I think that, that's challenging, you know, when you're running different size craft. Mm -hmm. um, but they're taking good lines. Does he have a pallet? Does he have a, what's on the back of that, that raft? Is that a throw bag clipped on the outside? Something like that, yeah. A rope or mm -hmm. something. I'm not a big fan. Um, yeah, I'd rather have it on the inside of the raft so it doesn't catch on stuff and you can see it if it comes up. I mean, uh, everybody's always like, my, my ropes are always out the back too. And everybody's like, put your rope in. What's it going to catch on? The ropes really catch on things? No, it's more they come undone and then they're floating. Oh, and then they catch got on it. Then they're floating. You yeah, don't it. know. So when it's on the outside, they can, come, they can come untied. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't, you, you don't see it. Yeah. So the question now is what's the next boat spacing? Like where, where should the next boats be? How close? Like this oh, close? Uh, I would like to see that person come in frame before now. I think they're, they're farther behind than they need to be, but who knows what happened? We sent them in groups of two. That's why I'm, I'm just curious. They were actually purpose fan groups. We, I didn't want to send four at a time because I was worried if there was a two person pileup that there'd be two more boats coming and it would be just crazy. Buckles break on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Willie Bum Bum agree. Like even you have throw bags on the outside, yeah, the buckles break and the throw bag goes downstream. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Um, do people oh, do that okay. anymore? That's Denise. You're, you're kind of like, that's old school there. That's like, I mean, like, like, a, like, a like, like when outside. my dad was going rafting, they used to straddle the tube. That's like, I don't really, do you see many problems with that anymore, Zach? You mean people straddle do? the main tube? Like with a leg on yeah, the Yeah, like right like a horse and then you paddle on it. Like that's how they I mean, that's just, just part of sitting. That's just part of, you know, the big difference too is like boats have thwarts now. They used to have like, you know, a lot of, when, a lot of times with those Avons, we used to use like two thwarts far away and a lot of foot cups. But now that there's so many thwarts in boats, there's yeah. places to put your feet. So, you know, people are happy to, to sit in you know, thwarts. How about this boat spacing, Aaron? I mean, I, I could run, I could see running a little closer, you know, but are you okay with it? Yeah. I'm like okay it? with it. Yeah. I, I, your... I, I would say they're, they're a little farther away than I, if anything, they don't need to be any farther away. I would say that. Okay. But also that the, the boat, the boat, this, the raft, the, the second raft is pulling backwards and slowing down a lot more. And the first raft isn't pulling upstream quite as much. So that he's slowly pulling over the first place. Different styles forward. of boating. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which and is, I think that, think that's, that's a, okay. I think that's a tricky part about trying to fall close is, is you got to adjust your style to try to stay close. And it's really hard to run close. Um, yeah. But I think that people, I, what we're talking a lot about is like, I know you like to push or I know you like to pull, but you have to adjust with the group a little bit. You have and to be able to do both so you can stay in your boat spacing in order. Yeah, totally. And, and I think that's one of the things too, is people always feel like, oh, it's a second person's job. It's like, well, the first person has to help too. Yeah. You know, you 100%. got you got to you got to think about what the second person craft is and how they're moving and like you got to try to help out. If they get really close to you, you got to go ahead a little bit. So So if one person's a pusher and one person's a puller, uh, those two the pu pusher in the front has to start pulling more than they want to. And the person in the back has got to like push more than they want to. And I think yeah. that's what delineates what I'm calling a class four boater is you're not stuck in your ways. You don't only do things the way you're able to make these maneuvers, both pushing and pulling, staying in position. Totally. Yeah. That's, I mean, 
that's a good class four guide right there. Like you can maintain your, your, you, you're there to help your, your team. You know, it's not just about you. Yeah. Um, like a guide I'll say, Hey, no, no, I can run class four. I got class four. Like, that's cool. Can you do it? You know, in position, can you do a class four rapid and be continually adjusting your position to provide safety for the rest of the group? That's, that's actually class four yeah. loading. Yeah, this one too, the same thing's happening. This guy's going really slow and he's doing a nice line through there, but then slowly the orange boat slowly getting farther and farther ahead. And it's also because of the lines they chose. And that's a tricky thing too, is like going first day, you get to choose your line and going second. Sometimes your line's a little forced if you want to keep good pace spacing by what the first person does. But also the first person needs to try to choose lines that's going to be easy for the second person to follow and maintain that boat spacing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think like somebody who's a, I would call like a class five butter to me, it doesn't mean that they can run the biggest class fives always. It's, can you stay, can you, the person in front, completely adapt to the person behind you no matter what they do and continually be able to, show, be able to look back? All, like you're so comfortable running the rapid, you're looking back as much as you need to and you're putting yourself where you need to be to provide safety for somebody behind you who can't maintain both oh. facing. They're just surviving. But if you can in the front adapt at all times to where they're at, I think that's huge, huge, huge. Yeah. There's some comments here if we want to go, go check out some comments. Participating. I mean, if, I don't know, Heidi. I mean, I think. Yeah, that's, that's a really, I, I mean, Heidi, like, yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting one. Like, I think there's, there's, the, there's a thing of like, there's, I think a private boat or safety talk is going to vary depending on what's going on. Like if everyone's taking their own rafts, it gets interesting. Um, but if you have people in your boat and particularly people who aren't as, as experienced, like they need a safety talk. And there, there it makes sense if you all, like let's say you have four rafts and you, each person's bringing some friends along and a bunch of them gone, maybe one person gives a safety talk for all of them. But it's important to have that figured out. There's that part of the safety talk thing. And then I think there's like the safety meeting type of thing between rafts to sit there in the morning and be like, how are we running? How are we running these rapids? And how are we going to do this as safely as possible? How are we going to support each other? Like, what are the main eddies we're going to catch? How are we going to run? What order do we want to run? Are there any key things that we need to talk about during the day? You know, like that's coming like, Oh, Hey, there's a portage here. We're going to scout here. We're going to scout from the right. Anything like anything of that nature. So it is tricky though. I mean, I think finding good people to boat with is like, I mean, it, it's it's hard. It's challenging. I think that's why Zach and I are still friends because it's hard to find good people to vote with. I mean, no, seriously, you know, it's yeah. like like yeah, you we, find the right. We don't like each other. Someone. We don't like each other, but we both look out. We both give safety talks, so we hang out. Yeah, and once you find those good people, you hold on to them. You find good yeah. voting partners, and you're like, oh, this is a good boating problem. I like this person, and they like to vote a lot. Cool, I'm going to go with them. Um, I think Heidi, there's a lot of stuff, you know. I, I'm hopefully through some of the videos that we do sharing what I think are best practices. And there's a lot of stuff that the boaters do that aren't appropriate, like, you know, drink all the time, take their life jacket off a bunch. And so, you know, these are hard things to break. There's habits out there that are break. Don't like, like this, don't participate in a safety talk. And I think our goal is to share best practices. And if people do it, cool. If they don't, they don't. Uh, I, I think of an example, there's a guy I used to boat the wind with. And uh, on the wind, even people aren't like always looking out for each other, you know, but I would, I always am like thinking about this all stuff all the time. It's part of, I, I love boating like this because it's actually more than just the rapids. Like I have to do a lot of other things that are super interesting to me. It's like a team sport. I love it. And if I'm paying attention to a, a group, I will notice who's also playing that team sport. Like, you know, Aaron, if we're boating with some a group, we know who's just in it for themselves and who's, because those people are doing certain things, making eye contact. And this oh, guy, yeah. Will, I, I met on the wind. At the end of the day, I was like, oh, yeah, hey, dude, I love that you were, you know, playing safety too. Like, let's boat together. And we became boating partners for a few years just because, like, there was no communication beforehand. We just, like, I just noticed he was doing it. He noticed I was doing it. And then we went off and did more adventures together because we were heads up, you know, and that's the way we needed to be. And so, but tips to motivate people, I I don't know, man. It's, I, we need to, I, I think there's some culture shifts that have to happen and, Maybe we can uh, change things. As a I, I, I was, I will say tips. I think Heidi, the big tip is ask a couple questions. Hey, how do you, you guys, if this happens, how do we want to handle this today? Or do you guys, do you guys have a particular order you want to go in? Does anyone want to go first or does anyone have 
who has what safety gear, you know, just like, can we talk a little about that stuff and to see what people brought and so we know in case something happens. I think, I think asking questions is one of the best ways to do it without being like, like kind of in your face, like, Oh, Hey, we need to, we need to just be like, Oh, Hey, you know, like, are there any rapids people want to scout today? Or we, you know, yeah, I ask that. a lot is what's your guys, what's your signal for stop? Because there's not consistency among boaters for that mm. signal. So that might, that one starts conversations. What do you guys use for stop? Just so I know. And the other thing, did you just start something in memory? A lot of things I'll do is I'll say, hey, let's gather around really quick. Can everybody here mention their one favorite safety pet peeve? People love talking about their safety pet peeve. You know, and then people are like, I hate it when people do this. And I think we should all have a throw bag. And so having us go have, in private butters go around a circle and everybody mentioning their one pet peeve, I, I think is is effective. Okay, hey, as you talk to me, so I'll pump them up, Jerry. Yeah, Peter, did you thanks just, for the comment. Yeah. Did you just yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah. So I mean, John, I this is what I was saying about earlier about if you're a really good boater, and I'm not and I call this a class five mindset, it doesn't mean you're running class five. It means that you have like a high level of ability. You can run class five, maybe you just choose not to because you want to live, right? And so I would think that it the per you want them behind you. And you can adapt to whatever they're doing. It doesn't matter what they're doing. Like you have the ability to position yourself and speed up or slow down based on them. And so you're a good safety mitt for that less experienced person behind you. So I'm going to think to myself, how close can we be so we don't run into each other? But if that person swims, I can perform an ad adequate rescue. Or if I did fall out for whatever reason, do they have a chance of getting me? That's what's in my brain. I'm going to say most often the inexperienced person, I'm trying to get them to be closer to me. Like they're, they're too far away. I feel like it's rare that I'm like, Hey man, you're too close. Like that just, you know, like, like that's not the problem. So in general, I'd say less experienced, more experienced people in general want them closer. And we've talked about this. I know, but I think before on the show is my comment is like, I want you to be as close as possible to me where you know, you're not going to run into and that's, yep. and I think that doesn't matter how good or bad you are. It's the same thing. Like, it, yeah, I agree. And that's actually what's coming up in this video here in a minute. I think this is the right video where, um, you know, in this, in this class we just did, they did boat spacing the first day and I showed them the video and I go, guys, that's way too far apart. And they're like, that seemed right. And then the next day they were super tight, like very much tighter. And they were surprised how well they ran that tight, you know? So I think, more closer than you think it's actually pretty close and and zach going back to your team thing it's really fun running tight mm -hmm. it's it's really fun trying to run close like it's a good challenge when you get a little bit better it's it's cool like hey how how tight can i run and do this safely like yeah. it's i i really I, yeah i really enjoy that game oh wow mm -hmm. they are really tight here well, so this actually they're yeah. tight to start, but watch but how they good because they're gonna speed up as they enter the tongue and they're gonna get spread out more. You want to start off pretty tight. And watch how they pull uh here. Actually, this wasn't the video I wanted to show. But it's helpful that cat's in the back because the cat can slow down a little bit more too. So the cat can start right behind. So you see they're kind of pulling right out to get in position. I wonder if this was the video I wanted to show. No, they're not. They're, they're spacing. Is this this? Is this the first day or this March twenty second? Which state was that? No, I think. Well, I think this is the last day. I'm trying to remember where we're at. Oh, I know where we're at. I sorry. This is the right video. This is the first day. Oh, this is the second day. This is the second day. And like that black boat made it a little harder because they were going a different line than the green, so they're mm -hmm. drifting out. So how do you feel about that on spacing? I really like the cataract spacing. Um, the black boat, I think, could have started a little closer, but it looks like the black boat's but catching they, up. But now adjusted. the yellow, but the, but the yellow boat is now having a harder time. Well, the yellow boat stopped to pool. surf a lot. That yellow boat was surf was stopping to play a lot of surf, so that's what happened yeah. there. But yeah, right here, great. how do you feel about that? Yeah, it looks good. Hmm. I mean, I think they could run tighter still and be okay, but um, yeah, I think it's good. 
particularly for this this run where it's a little rocky technical you want to have a little a little bit of space so that if someone catches a rock you don't go slamming into them out of control like you can avoid them Zach, I think an important thing to talk about is pulling into eddies and how to pull into the eddies and like in trying to not be in the middle of the eddy, be at the bottom or the top of the eddy, particularly if you're the first person in there. And like, okay. as you pull and think about how you're going to exit the eddy, like looking like how many people do we have? Where am I pulling in? The second boat's going to try pulling next to me. And then can everyone else pull in behind me? Do I want to be top? I feel like you want to be top or bottom but not in the middle because in the middle it's confusing mm -hmm. here. Um, this was a pullover for a scout. So and that's another, were... but let's go back to the scout pullover. That's, this is another important thing I feel like is like people pull in for a scout a lot of times and everyone will just go tie up their boats right away before all the boats are in. And then like the last boat is usually one of the weaker ones and that person has problem and everyone's boats are tied up. And so I think it's like, I don't know if this was on purpose, but that yellow boat looked like they were sitting there waiting for people to come down which is it's good to have a boat out there, someone ready to go in case something happens. So Particularly this is, if, this is a four boat pod right here. Yeah. And the next boats are coming down in a, a long amount of time. Theoretically, uh, okay. they, these guys are on their own right now. So they're pulling over to scout under the assumption. There's not, there is a group behind them, but under the assumption, there's not a group behind them. See like the, the guy, it's not bad here. The guy in the red boats out of his boat, but sometimes you'll see everyone out of their boat tying up or, or three of the four. And then the fourth person isn't even into the eddy yet. And that's where I, I think we want, you want to be careful. And then also just setting your team up plan on how you're going to pull out of the eddy, making it easy for everyone to pull out of the eddy when you're going, when you're going to go run something is think about it as you pull in, like set yourself up for success. The thing I loved about this that they did was they, they grouped their boats together. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They weren't just spread out along yep. the beach. And mm -hmm. so this is the second pod right here. And I told uh, the person in the front, I said, if though if you get down to that scout and there's they're just taking up the whole beach, we because we talked about this and like scouting, like tie your boats up together. If they didn't do it, you blow through and run them rapid. You can't pull your four people. If you can't pull your four people over, you can't stop. And you have to keep going. And you'll see here that like, there was plenty of room for them to tie the boats up. But a lot of times, like, we'll see groups, like, you know, four boats take up the space of 12, right? Mm -hmm. And that's not really fair yeah, if another group exactly. was to come down. It's just messy. It's so messy. Yeah, you want it. That's why, that's why I say top A, bottom A, and yeah, have your boats together. Is a good point, too. What do you think about the spacing? It's a bit much. Yeah, it's okay, quite a bit you. much. Yeah, I yeah. want I want the purple boat to to be able to rescue the yellow, the orange boat, Um if he swims. So it's a bit far. And I think there's a, there's not, there's probably not good visuals from front boat to last boat. Cause it's so much. And so the last boat does is if the lead boat is setting the line for everybody, the last boat doesn't see that line. So the mm. last boat is now playing telephone, right? The information is propagating back. And when it does, the lines slowly get worse and worse. So when you pull over to scout, will you ever just pull your boat up on shore and not tie it off? Is that, is that a trick question you're in? No, I'm just curious. Are you saying, like, are you saying, I've worked, I've worked, places, do where officially? I, I've worked, I've worked or, places where you have to tie your boat up every time. Don't ever pull up, don't ever just pull your boat up on shore. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, you should pull you. I should think you should tie your boat up. Yeah. I think it, I think you should. Now there are times when, you know, in the circumstance, I'm like, I, I there's nobody like, there's nobody's going to come down behind us to bump us off. I know the river's not going to rise. I can pull it up really far. I'm 100% sure there's not going to be a problem. But mm -hmm. every time I do that, I think to myself, I should be tying my boat up. And I'm not. Best, best practice. Now so here, I, yeah, totally. Sorry. So if it comes off, I'm, I'm an idiot. But you should tie your boat up. It's best practice. Can you back, if you can back up uh, 15 seconds here. That blue boat, so they come in. Oh, you're going way back. But they come in, and this is one of, this is one of my pet peeves, my little things. Like you pull in, like I don't know who's – leading this group but these guys pull in and like leave some space between them so it's going to be a lot harder for that last boat to pull in if they the first person pulls in the next boat pulls in right next to him then you can use one oar as you pull in but if you pull in like wide apart and the people have to pull in between you it makes it much more difficult for the people at the end to come in Does yeah this is this is no so i think that's pretty obvious like right now it's yeah see how white the white boat's struggling with the oar yeah the exactly oar. it's hard to get now this is a small boat so it's doable but now what's left is for the green boat is, well, the white boat's like, I'm just going down. 
<laughs> like yeah. I can't get in there. And maybe she left a spot for Greenbow purposely. Like, you know, I'll, I'll, I see what's coming, but yeah, the, it's nice if it goes the first boat, then the second boat, then the third boat, then the no fourth boat in order. So you don't have to fill a hole. Yeah. Like, yeah trying exactly. to get your boat into a hole is really hard to do. Mm -hmm. So this is the this they just got it. This is the rapid, and here, uh, the yellow cataract is the last boat in this pod. But it's like I'm gonna go down and catch an eddy and, and hang out. How do you feel about that? Um, yeah, I'm okay with it. It depends on the individual. It depends on the scene. It depends on the rapid. What's going on? It's like, yeah, I mean. I think I'll say he caught the eddy and he did it well. So I think yeah. it's cool. Do you if think he mess, that, if he messed it up, I would be super, super. Do you think annoying. that he had a responsibility to talk to whoever the, the trip leader was, but Hey, just heads up. I'm going to go down and catch the eddy or just go. Uh, and do I wouldn't it even fine. say, I would say more than just give him a heads up. I'd say, Hey, is it cool with you guys? If I go down and catch this eddy? Yeah. I think more just, just check in with them and be like, Hey, I'd like to, I want to go down and catch that eddy right at the top and just hang out there and watch you guys go by. Um, and not to say, hey, I'm going to go do this. Cause it's like, whoa, Hey, let's, yeah. Hey, would you, you mind? Know, maybe, yeah. Do you mind if I went down and caught the Eddie just cause I'm like antsy? Cause I, I get that way a lot. I'm like, yeah, like everybody waiting. I want to go catch an Eddie and just like, yeah, you know, I want to, you know, I just want to get yeah. in the water. I don't want to sit here and talk forever. I also think a, a lot of times people just hang out waiting for things to happen. And once a boat leaves, then that gets everybody going. Otherwise we're going to be here all day, tying our boats, talking about clone wars, you know, Things like that. Yeah, this is the Zach Collier. We need to get to. This I do this all the time. Finish. I'm like, I see, like, we have to make it to camp tonight. Some one boat has to leave, and the rest will leave. I do say, I think he could have pulled. Like, I'd be pulling out right now, right? Like, it looks like, it looks like yeah, he, he could have been a little quicker pulling out. His spacing, yeah. his timing is off there. His spacing now is pretty large. And a I, little, a little bit large. Yeah, a little bit. And I think that's one of the reasons it was good him pulling that Eddie to practice that. To figure out his time, yeah. to get better at that. So, and I, well, the, I, those front two are running really tight. That looks which, great. The I, I like one, this a lot. I want to just stop this for a second. I, I like this a lot because I, again, like the second boat is the safety for the first one. So I want one and two to run pretty tight. And I'm okay if third boats back a little bit more because if one and two have a pile up, I want to be able to catch an eddy and avoid it. Right. So I really like one and two to be pretty tight, so tight that they might run into each other. You know, that might happen, but boat three has to be like, hey, I'm going to get some space here. And I think I still think boat three has a little more space than it needs. Right yeah. Now. It's, I agree, closer, but like, it's, like I'm not, not that much more, but you know, it could be a yeah. little bit closer. Yeah. Right. Cause if boat one does flip. Yeah. And boat two goes after, then boat three is now safety for boat two still. That's that black wing, the best boat ever made. But you only own one of them. I'll own more. I don't need them. I mean, it's more. If it's the best boat ever made, Zach. I mean, well, it's for multi-day trips. It's not. It's not the most useful thing. How do you feel like how they left the Eddie there? Yeah, That's it was pretty really slick, fast. huh? Look at that. Yeah, the rent beautiful good. boat order. I thought I was. I, I brought the wrong video. I thought I brought the video of the day before when boat order was way off, but I didn't bring that video. Mm -hmm. and they were leaving eddies and they were waiting. Like somebody was a hundred feet downstream before they started leaving the eddy and that created massive spacing. So what we worked on a lot is once the first boat's out, you know, be pretty close to coming out so you can be on their tail. You know, you don't wait for them to get downstream to pull out. Like leave, we leave at the right timing. So, and we're almost done with this and I, we're probably going to finish up soon. Do you want to pull up that other video? Yep, I got them already. Oh man, you are awesome. Let me go through this and just see if there's anything else I want to share. Just some flipping. I, let's go back to flipping. I just want to remind everybody this is such an important point. The hardest part of flipping is getting on the upside down boat. And just as a reminder, this is hard. And this is a skill that we need to practice. Like if we're going to flip, getting on this boat is difficult. And I, I've, I've been practicing a lot on the wings are really hard. It's really hard to get your finger in the holes in the wings. So I'm actually going to put little loops of, of hoopy in there to help me. Cause of, like the, if your fingers are cold too, you're just not going to get them in the holes. Oh, so yeah. doing this is, this is 
actually a pretty good job. It's just that's a, yeah, the airboats are and the airboats are a lot like the wings. I mean, it's almost yeah, they're hard to hard, do. Right? Yeah. So let everybody know that this is good and it, it looks hard. And so as a reminder, if you're not practiced on this and you want to be a class four boater, being able to get on your upside down boat, I think is an important skill that, that even class three boaters should have. You know, a good place to practice is on the side of a pool. On the side of a pool? Yeah. Like pulling yourself out of a pool. You know, with like the, you've got the, you've got. Oh, the don't use a raft. Just go to a pool and, and pull yourself. Yeah, if you, out if of you're pool. in a, when you're next time you're at a pool, just practice getting yourself out of the pool along the side without using the ladder in deep water. Sure, it's and better than it, nothing, but nothing it, beats a raft. It really helps a lot. It, it it makes a big difference. You get the timing, the kicking, the sensation, and it also helps you climbing into a right side up boat. Not all of us in right Hawaii where there's pools everywhere, Aaron. No, there's no pools around here. Everyone just goes to the oceans. <laughs> okay, all right. There actually, right. actually, there are pools everywhere, but. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's a good way to. I think it's a good way to practice in warm water and just like when yeah. you're at a pool, just like get out of the pool without using the ladder in the deep water, you know, and like and you do that a bunch of times, you get stronger, and it's easier than the raft, but you still you you use those those muscles, you learn that rhythm, the rhythm of kicking yourself up and getting yourself up. Yeah. So, but there's certainly, I think, a physical fitness associated with getting back in a boat like no matter how good your technique is there is a certain level of physical fitness and this is one of the reasons why i think again if you're starting to want a boat more difficult water physical fitness is an important aspect i mean first if you swim it's important you know but also to, if you can't get back on your upside down boat that's an issue that's something that i think is something to consider those of you that want to run class four and so you know a, an important part is is thing in shape yeah i think it's it's hard for bigger people you know like like the lighter and skinnier you are the easier it is to pull yourself back on the boat yeah i i struggle yeah, with yeah. it i'm not i'm not yeah an aaron cavagnolo water polo player it's it's this thing i have to practice a lot and i you know do my extra push-ups here and stay in shape if i want to keep boating some of those harder rivers because it's, it's really hard for me well, you use that bad technique of trying to go up on the ends. If you start going to the sides, like you find I can't easier. get up. I've been trying. I can't do it. I literally like. You, I can't do it on the ends. Like the ends, I feel like silly. I'm like, oh, I, I need to go practice because you get up, you grab the strings. It's right there. There's nothing else to you just, grab. It's like the pool. It's like getting out of the pool. You just go straight, push all the way up to your. To show you your hands go to your past your hips, basically. So you, you don't put a hand, you don't put a hand on the handle. You put two hands yeah. up on the things. Yep. I don't have that kind of strength. Oh, I think you do. I think I, you do. It's like a, it's like a pull up. Can you do a pull up? I can do a pull up. I don't think I can do that. I should do more pull ups. I, I think the pull up actually, and I think the pull ups do help a lot because you need strong lats. That's the, yeah. I mean, that's, know, it, it, yeah. I just can't think like pulling up like that. It's, yeah, well, I mean, you gotta I get do... your hips out behind you, up on the surface, and pull yourself up that way, and kick yourself. I've never Try been it. able to do that. Both hands. Oh, no. Both hands. All right, I did it the other day. The handle and that, and I went up. But to go from this it's not that handle, hard. oh man, I don't know. I'll try it, but it's gonna be embarrassing. All right, get your videos up, Aaron. All right, let's do it. Okay. Um, here, this is. I forget who sent these in. Um, Aaron. This was. Oh, this is wanna, from Zach. Yeah, this isn't from Zach. Yeah, this one's from Zach. Different um, Zach. I, I want to. I want to apologize to our audience again for Aaron's behavior. What? What part of my behavior? Not knowing the names of who sent in the videos. No, I was trying to remember which one was which. Zach, come on. John. Okay. Oh, by the way, John wrote. Um, I saw your video of double wrap. Whose video? My video. No, Peter's. There's a double wrap. Did I miss that? Oh, wait, no. I don't know what they're talking about. That's a good question. All right, here we go. So let's watch Zach's. Here's here's Zach rowing meat grinder on the South Fork of the American. Um, Try going full screen with that too. See what happens. Yep, you bet. Oh, come on. Well, that was weird. It didn't go full screen. There we go. That's better. Okay. So I really like, I'm going to back up here a little bit. I like how he's doing these little corrections with his oars going through this tight spot here. Like he's doing like those little, you know, those little micro strokes here. Like this, you can see him doing little strokes. Oh, I call that crabbing. Crabbing, he's, yeah. He's shipping and he's using his oars a little bit. Yeah, I think that he's time. using some great technique in there to get that through there. I thought that was, I really enjoyed that. Um, 
Yeah. I like that he has the a waist, waist belt throwback too. That's a good, nice throwback. I, Zach, I was looking at that. I feel like that thing has a lot of drag. It's, yeah, it means a, a lot of drag on that back. I mean, I, I, I can't, it's a little bit pixelated from my end, but yeah, I mean, you should be a better swimmer. I think it's nice that he has a throwback with him and he's ready to go. But I, I think I like the ones that are lower profile, like the one that you got from Mark and like the NRS ones that are lower yeah, profile and don't create the drag. I'm, you know me, I'm all about making it easy to swim, so less drag. <laughs> Oh man, I, so, I did some swimming testing in my. Uh, I tested my swimming the other day on the river. It, I, I think I'm in pretty good shape, but when you're swimming in cold water, hard, it oh, yeah, it's exhausting. It's a good reminder want, how exhausting it is. Definitely, you want every advantage you can have, and you got to love him. He's got he's using his uh, rights. The one thing I feel like with him, I'm noticing with the strokes is the strokes are. It looks like and maybe it's the angle from the camera. It looks like his stroke is all in front of the 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 lock if that makes sense like his stroke his, his oar comes out of the water before it goes past the lock which tells me he may want to bring his towers a little closer to him does that make sense what i'm saying yeah sure i mean maybe the tower placement isn't perfect i do you know how i'm finicky about oar length i feel like this is pretty good oar length i think i bet his well, he just, are nice this is this is this is a story about he just went a half a foot longer than before. So this yeah, is, I think his, this is longer than he had before. This is the yeah. right length. I wouldn't go shorter than this. Yeah. But I think you bring him back a little closer to him, then he'll, he'll be in more in the power zone. And I don't like when he puts his oars in, they're like pretty far forward and much more likely to catch. I call that crabbing an oar when you catch an oar on a rock and it comes shooting up at his face. Um, like right, right there. See how you see See how it's like pointing at him basically when he starts his strokes because he's so far back. Oh like yeah. Right there. yeah. 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 And so if he brought the, if he brought the towers back towards him, he wouldn't, they wouldn't be pointed at him so much and he'd push past the tower at the end of it. I yeah. I haven't thought much about, I, I really haven't put much thought into front forward, like our tower placement by what you're saying. Now I'd make it a little harder for him to ship it. Um, yep. but yep. I, I think, I think he'd be, I think he'd find it more functional that way. So, but if you watch him row, he's basically his blade is fully submerged. He's doing a push up, and any shorter, his arms will be too high. And yeah. I know, he, I think, I think this. I've been watching a lot of people row lately, and this looks natural to me. Yeah, yeah, it, it's yeah, extra yeah. more management, uh, but it's going to pay dividends. Yeah, no, I I agree. Yeah, I think that's, and I think that that, that my point about the towers is a very minor point. I think. I would be curious for him, see him try it sliding back a little bit and see how it would work for him. Um, yeah. I like the way he, sh he ships his oars a lot. You know, he's really good at back going back and forth. Yeah. Very hey, familiar. speaking of spins, he's in, in, in outies. We got Dustin to uh, take pins eclipse on the wind. Oh yeah. How'd that go? He didn't, he didn't hate him. He didn't complain much. He was like, yeah, I see the point. It was less dramatic than I thought it would be. He did great too. It didn't, you know, it didn't, break an oar and then blame it on pins and clips oh it's hard to break oars when you're using pins and clips it's really easy to break oars nice ship great there. ship that was so yeah. sweet that i was like thinking to myself is he gonna ship or not that was beautiful oh. then he just caught his oar there but that's okay that happens there you go i mean this yeah, is just I, good rowing I, yeah very nice solid. smooth rowing yeah definitely yeah it looks and like that's a tough rapid you know me grinder that's that's one of the wait I, did he just weird. send this to us to show how awesome he is what's is there something coming up is he gonna flip or anything exciting or is this just hey look at how awesome i am no, I think he was showing us his new oar setup. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah, I like it. What boat? Do we know what boat this is? I don't think so. What do you, what do you think? Is that a high side? High, do you think? I'm guessing a 12 at high side, maybe. Not a mini yeah. max, but like a 12 or maybe narrow 13 or something. Yeah, no, I, he's well suited for the day. He's got his dry suit on. He looks all oh. set. Um, I didn't know dudes wore pink helmets, but that's cool. That's also um, well, yeah. That, it's like you you prefer you prefer to have a helmet that no one can see when you're in the water. Is that hey, your, your plan? No. Well, I, mean, I have a new. Helmet. I mean, that pink helmet. If you think about that pink helmet, you're going to see that helmet in the river. I think that's a really smart color. Yeah, you're, you're right. I have a yeah. new red helmet. It's Ferrari red. I can't. I don't see it though. No, oh, you don't have. Don't you? Didn't you have a white helmet? I did, but it made me look like a stormtrooper, so I stopped wearing it. It was really <laughs> embarrassing. 
Well, no one's going to see you in the whitewater. They're going to be like, where's Zach? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark reminded me the importance of being visible when you swim. So I just I gave up my fashion over a color. Okay. So pink pink is a good color for, for safety. Let's see if there's um, anything, any action here that we can. That's also that new Coquitat PFD. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that one. It's I I put up one on. It's it's like uh, the foam is bent, so it's very comfortable. Mm -hmm. They they look cool too, but right. not a lot let's, of flotation. Let's watch them going through Troublemaker. Let's just jump down to Troublemaker. Watch them run Troublemaker. Oh, it's a little cold. Yeah, it's comfortable, huh? Yeah. You wouldn't like how little flotation it has. It's pretty minimal, but. It's, but you uh, look, but you look cool, and it's comfortable. So why does it, why does flotation matter? It matters. Now we had it's, some people swim the other day, and you know, the minimal life jacket. I was like, oh, geez, that's right. I should probably get a new PFD. My ship. Oh, oh, that was a okay. sweet ooh. No, that's fine. And he's just let's see. There he goes. Yeah, that's. I like that move. Just get down and hunker down, and like. Why didn't that? Gear. Why didn't that ship work? Go back and watch it. I think he crabbed the oar a little bit. Oh, we got back a little bit farther. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it just it kind of got caught it, and then it slid out of the lock part, and so it spun and just got yanked out. So. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of rowing, as I said, and uh, this is good. This is great rowing. This is impressive. Like this yeah. is there's a lot of skills Very here smooth. that that um He's great at shipping. Like he's, you know, anticipating his move, making it early, and then shipping. Yeah, this is a tricky spot here. So ship, uh, and then, then he got he got, got bounced, and he like kind of lost the ship. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I, I mean, that's I what, like I, I like that the, move there at the end. We just I'm gonna gets make down the, the bottom. Yeah, yeah, like I'll just write it out. I like I might like the point that pins eclipse would have made a difference. Would to leave bum bum because the ore would have been stability for him. Right, he wouldn't have like gotten thrown around. He could have depended on his oars for stability, instead of you know getting tossed around a little bit and letting his oar come out. He looks very relaxed, not worried about it at all. Yeah, yeah one oar is more than enough. Yeah, look good. That was, I mean, that happens, right? And yeah. like, but he, I think the big thing there is like he got off plan A, but his plan ended up working out well. You know what I mean? Yeah. He didn't get to a, a bad plan where he's like spinning out of control. He's just like, oh, okay, I got one oar. Okay, and I'm just gonna hunker down. Okay, I'm at the bottom. Cool. You know, like like n nothing bad happened out of it. Nice line. Yeah, that's right. sweet. Okay, let me. Uh, we'll bring that, up the other one here. The other one. That's the other one. that's what excellence looks like. And uh, this is this is the guy fall one of the guys falling behind him, I think, in, in, in an inflatable kayak, same day. So we'll see. It looks like a high side paddleac. Yeah, totally right. I would I would be scared to inflatable kayak this thing. Just go far left. Which he did. And now get back right. There you go. That's it. No big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the car? <laughs> oh. Wait, what how did <laughs> that even defense. happen? On, on the eddy fence. He didn't he didn't uh lean up shooting up as he came across the eddy fence. That was a really oh. strong eddy fence. So yeah, nice job flipping it back over. Yeah, hey. Are we gonna see the self rescue? I think so. I think he's just like washing him. It looks like he's like just taking his time. Like, okay, yep, there it is. Nice. Yeah, yeah nice. You done. Nice self rescue. You can tell he's done that before. You know. <laughs> yeah. When I say that in a good way, I mean that in a good way. Is like you know he looked very comfortable. Yeah, there's just, there's the. There's what are the those ropes there. in the front? Hold on, go back on the raft. There's a bunch of ropes in the front. Ooh, yeah, I don't know if I'm a fan on that. What is that? that looks is that messy. the bow line? That's his bow line. So he just he just closes his bow line and puts a cam strap through that looks like. Mm. Which that's the thing, is there's that there's a part down here that's already loose and dragging in the water. I'd worry mm. about this. This is one of the things where I'll say is I'd rather have the bow line sit on the inside so I can see it, have a coil, because at some point that's gonna get loose, I feel like. That you get surfed in a hole or whatever, someday something happens. And as it starts getting up and they can get snagged on stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It that might be, be a little that uh, might be a mini max, actually looking at it now. Like a little 10 5 mini max. Yeah. It's hard to tell for sure. Um, what do you think about the handle uh facing forward on the spare on the spare? 
Some people like doing that. I don't really, I will say this. I, I, I think I broke an oar once down the Grand Canyon where we went to a huge wave and the blades are forward and the blade just got pulled and yanked off and it snapped off the blade. Another time I ripped a camp strap off because the blade was forward and it caught so much water. I still run blades forward. Of course, I don't learn anything yeah. from, from stuff, but um, so I, I can, I can see this and I've heard of other people having problems. Like I know someone else who always runs blades backwards. Cause he said someone got thrown into a blade one time and it broke this woman's arm. So he runs blades backwards. So I don't, I don't have a problem with the handles forward. But for me is I'm used to getting it the other way, just like sliding the way I rig mine. So it's really easy to access. It's nice having the blade forward. I find it's just a lot easier to pull it out. And that's I how I'm used to doing it. People who so. do it that way, I, they say they like to grab the or the front and put it in the lock. So they like it handle forward. For me, it's a feng shui thing. I just like the, I think it looks cooler with the blade forward. Yeah, that's interesting. I also going to say with the, on a or pal combo, I like the blade forward. That's probably why I do the blade forward on my gear, but mm -hmm. even though I don't need to, but uh, I like the blade forward on the, uh, on the combo. So, oh man. Um, Aaron, yeah, thanks for thanks for the video. And hey, if you want friends for Yampa permit, I'm sure there's some people here that would love to join you. That's a that's a great permit to get. That's a sweet permit to get. All right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I didn't mention Aaron's name here, huh? Oh, Crazy. Yeah. So so out of it. So off my game. Um, all right. I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay. We good? I think so, that's exactly. all we have for the week. Yeah, I missed all those last comments. What do what do we got? Any any other good comments? Oh, there? Uh, no, nah, just Willie Bum Bum claiming again. Willie Bum Bum, you can't use slashes in your hashtags. All right, I think you need to do spinnies. I think do a plus. Ah, can you use ampersand? We need to work on your your hashtags. We should. I'll I'll do some research, but sure, sure. Personal Very preference. Cool. Pins Eclipse are pretty awesome, though. But I, you know, I've been having this talk so much, I'm kind of tired of it. The Pins Eclipse, Orlock, Spinny, Inziati talk. I think we beat this one to death. Yeah. Well, Aaron, should we it's close? Nice having. Yeah, yeah. Let's close it down. Should we close it down? Let's should close we call it down. It? Yeah. Um, well, you guys, yeah, that's the end of another show. Thanks for tuning in this week at our new time. Was it two o'clock Pacific now that we're we're meeting? Two o'clock Pacific. Yep. Zach, do you have a show on Monday? Nope. Okay. The Monday show I love doing. It's about river guide professionalism. I should do one about the safety talks. Mark Mark did one on safety talks already, but it, we're I'm teaching classes almost every week for a while, so I don't know if I'm gonna do Monday shows for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, hey, so if you haven't slapped that like button, please. Do, this is a great time to do it now, and uh, feel free to subscribe. And of course. Turn on the, those notifications to ring that bell so that any time when Zach puts anything new online, you'll know right away. Um, also, appreciate those videos, Aaron and Zach. Isn't that crazy? Aaron and Zach sent us videos today. That is, yeah. That is really oh, yeah. Oh, my. I think they're messing yeah. with us. Yeah, yeah. Maybe their names really aren't Aaron and Zach. They just made it up just to be cool to get on the show. They figured they'd more likely. But uh, love the videos. Please keep sending us more videos. I really do not want you more video of the wind and zach's <laughs> telling me he's got hours Actually, of wind I, no i have some great video i i didn't have to run lead so i got to play and i took some really interesting lines oh i'm out to show you i like yeah I cool, yeah, yeah please cool send us video no next week wind. we're looking next week we're looking at more wind video yeah wait hey, yeah thanks again for turning you guys zach it was, it's fun as always oh i get i gotta do the ending thing hold on oh, yeah. champ